Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host Jason Leppert, here with a deck-by-deck -deck review of Disney Cruise Line's Disney Wish. The brand's first new ship in 10 years following Disney Fantasy remains familiar to loyalists, while also evolving in a number of exciting ways. Remember to stay tuned until the end of the video to see our concluding pros and cons. Let's first begin with the ship's specifications. Despite often being grouped in with standard mainstream lines, Disney Cruise Line and the Wish should more accurately be considered premium. The ship is the first of the Triton class and was launched in 2022. Size-wise, Wish is 144,000 gross tons, with a guest capacity of 4,000, which makes for a decent passenger space ratio of 36 even. Off from freshly designed cabin corridors, the accommodations we enjoyed were in the form of a lovely, deluxe family ocean view stateroom with veranda. At around 284 square feet, the room is longer than others and comes with a super comfortable, plush mattress that is undoubtedly teddy bear approved. The rooms are less vintage nautical than before and now place a greater emphasis on expanded artwork and brighter colors overall. And storage is truly plentiful at the full height vanity desk unit with an easy access pull-out refrigerator no less. Besides a tuckable table and poof, there are also tons of USB charging ports and electrical outlets at the vanity and both nightstands. As before, Disney's signature split bathrooms have returned. One compartment comes with a sink and a bathtub shower combo that is thankfully wider than before and still supplied with invigorating H2O Plus products. And the second compartment is configured with another sink and a toilet that is unfortunately placed a bit too close to the sink basin to sit on squarely. Meanwhile, ample storage continues at the closet with one of two hanging bays, a central tower of shelves with a safe, and a second hanging zone. As a longer cabin variety, there is even enough room for a sofa, in addition to a Murphy bed, before reaching the balcony, which is deep enough to stretch out a little. And of course, no modern cabin is complete without a large flat screen television. There are also several concierge categories available to upgrade into. Options include a 1,759 square foot concierge two-story royal suite with veranda that features a separate living room and its own dining room, plus a pair of bedrooms, each with their own luxurious bathroom. Not to mention a massive balcony with a whirlpool. By the way, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when all our new cruise videos are posted. Upstairs is not only a second bedroom, but also another palatial bathroom with a view to match and one that can be made private at the switch of a button. Especially unique to the ship is the line's first ever Concierge Wish Tower Suite. The larger 1,966 square foot category there are also a total of four and a half bathrooms and a library on the first floor that can convert into a bedroom with an attached full bath. Upstairs overlooking an impressive vaulted atrium are two side bedrooms, each sharing the view and coming with their own magnificent bathrooms. Tucked behind is an additional children's bedroom with fun bunk beds that has access to its own bathroom. And then on the other side is yet another bedroom with view and vanity. And yet another incredible bathroom. When you're ready to book your Disney Wish Cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get a complimentary quote, just click on the link right here, or call the number, or email the address displayed below. Now let's check out the ship's activities, followed by its dining and entertainment, all deck by deck. Passengers receive their first impression of the Wish again by way of an impressive central atrium. Rather than celebrate the golden age of travel as the four original ships do, here the Grand Hall serves as a castle at sea. Anchoring the space is a regal statue of Cinderella this time around, with a bit of mischief, let's say, happening behind her. And the ornate filigree leads to another new feature. With the Disney's Oceaneer Club now located down on deck two, kids can check in at the atrium and then uniquely slide down for additional children's activities. Ranging from the youngest at the repeated It's a Small World nursery 
where a train circles the perimeter as they play and nap. To the hub common area. This is the first Disney ship without an animator's palette, but the sketch drawing walls here are sure reminiscent of that original rotational dining room. Radiating from there are individual playrooms, including Mickey and Minnie Captain's deck, for children to try their hands at being a Disney Cruise Line Mariner, or the all-new Walt Disney Imagineering Lab, where participants can craft and video test their very own rides in the studio. as well as gather in a space serving the function of the former Disney's Oceaneer Lab, this time among neat Imagineering props and displays of the creative team's process. Or across the way is the colorful fairy tale hall for an inviting reading and storytelling space, interactive gaming area, or timeless craft spot. Then there's Marvel Superhero Academy, where kids can imagine themselves as allies to the Avengers and even suit up in their own costumes and be on the lookout for a lot of fun Easter eggs. That is before your training. Star Wars Cargo Bay is another extremely detailed space with all the delightful grunge the franchise is known for. Droid parts and creatures abound here including some that must be summoned, as it were. Changing gears to return to Deck 3 is a series of luxury retail. There are more brand name shops on Wish than any Disney ship before her, complete with enough bling to make any guest feel like royalty. And then heading up from there to Deck 4 via convenient side stairwells, is access to the Grand Hall Mezzanine level, as well as Bibbidi Boppity Boutique, where kids can be made up in a princess, princesses, pirates, and more. On the opposite side, the guest services on Port Adventures desks have been made more informal, and thus easily approachable as individual stations. And separated off from the spa is the centrally located Untangled Salon. For feminine hair treatments all over Rapunzel. Not to mention the masculine Hooks Barbary. For not only shaves, but also a speakeasy style whiskey bar where custom old fashions can be crafted. Now that's a cool addition just for adults. Then up on deck five is the more traditional Senses Fitness Center with all kinds of exercise equipment ready to use as well as a side motion studio which wraps around to the other side for the Senses Spa and its soothing living walls, treatment rooms for couples or individuals, and a greatly expanded rainforest room with experience showers, heated tile loungers, and even a set of swings suspended over a flowing puddle. Besides water features are also a cold room, dry sauna, steam room, and thanks to being relocated at the bow, a sheltered outdoor deck with whirlpools and lovely lily pad-like hammocks to further relax in under a not-so-hidden Mickey. Naturally, there are also opportunities for future vacation planning on board. with the section just for Disney Vacation Club. And next door is the Shutter's Portrait Studio and Gallery, which has been environmentally consolidated with all digital kiosks. Other than luxury shopping, Mickey's main sale is again along for the ride. 
for an awesome selection of logo items, cruise line clothing, print-on-demand artwork, and so much more. And as kids get older and graduate to tweens on Wish, Edge is back as a trendy space full of video screens, sodas, and seats for mingling about fun props. Old school vinyl nations included. Then heading up above most of the staterooms is Deck 11 and Dory's Forget-Me-Nots, a shop dedicated to pool-time necessities like towels, cover-ups, and sunscreen, all of which is adjacent to the main pool deck itself. Rather than only having two large pools, there are now several smaller ones, like Mickey's Pool, below Funnel Vision and the stage. As well as Minnie's Pool, flanked by Daisy's and Pluto's Pools. And even up from those is also Donald's Pool and Goofy's Pool. For a total of six pools, with yet another to be seen soon. Water slide wise, the kitty variety on board is the hilariously themed Slidosaurus Rex. which is a decent length for such a twisting body slide that descends to a Toy Story themed group of water features encompassing Trixie's Falls plus the Toy Story Splash Zone and its fun aquatic character renditions. Also on 12, but in its own secluded area, is Vibe for Teens. They may not have the bow all to themselves as on the Disney Dream and Fantasy, but their international themed loft is still pretty cool. Besides all the requisite screens, is an additional sidebar space that can be uniquely isolated for other age groups to use as needed. which is itself located adjacent to the new Hero Zone. The sports court has been brought indoors as a double-decker funhouse for basketball action, as well as a massive, blow-up, Incredibles-themed obstacle course for kids and kids at heart to challenge themselves to. Plus, there's additional foosball, air hockey, and more table games to pass the time with. And for the moment you've all been waiting for, Disney's first attraction at sea the Aquamouse can be reached up on Deck 13. Humorously themed to port adventures gone awry, there are two storylines featured on board this raft water ride. Unlike the Aqueduct on Dream and Fantasy, there is no need to climb stairs to board high in the smokestack. Instead, a conveyor belt takes riders up as a series of animated shorts narratively convey the playful mayhem to come. As this front half of the attraction is enclosed, there is no view beyond the ascending opaque tube. Fans of vintage and current Disneyland will appreciate the original Skyway references and bobsled area music. While not working on my particular ride, over 65 nozzles usually spray water all over the place in sync with the comic action. The whole setup to the top is very cute and is attraction-like with its full story. But it amounts to half the ride length essentially being utilized as a lift climb, with only the back half dedicated to any real thrills as seen here. The final portion is a blast, thanks to its Aqua Blaster water coaster elements, and its translucent section cantilevered over the side of the ship. However, it's all over sooner than one would hope, but final greetings from Mickey and Minnie, as well as Chippendale. Trying to hitch a ride to Castaway Key are adorable. Also on Deck 13 is the only real contiguous adults-only section of the ship in the way of a private sun deck and quiet cove pool and whirlpool. Located at the stern, the infinity-style pool with reclining sections is marvelous. As is sight seating to dip just your feet in although the smoking area position above can spoil the solitude below. 
Last but not least for activities is one extra, Chippendale's Pool, up on deck 14 forward. It's really a secret pool that most people don't know about, so be sure to take advantage of it. Now onto dining as we stay high and descend back down. Also hidden up on deck 14 is the convenient Currents Bar. Be sure to wave at the tire suite as you walk by and gaze at the rest of the ship stretching behind. As you'd expect, the aforementioned Quiet Cove adult area on Deck 13 has its own bar. And the favorite Cove Cafe has been repeated as well. The welcome indoor space is handsome, but unfortunately can only be accessed from the outside, which in the elements, under no cover on this particular ship, will likely prove problematic for those getting coffee here, no matter how pretty, with cool printed foam. Lower on Deck 12 at the Toy Story Splash Zone is Wheezy's Freezies to purchase all sorts of chilled beverages. And on the same deck are the adult-only specialty restaurants on Wish, which the Rose Bar serves as a pre- and post-dinner lobby to. With no publicly accessible observation lounge, this venue partially does the trick, nicely overlooking the ship's side. And its premium drinks are great to sip, while scenery or people watching. Entirely new on Wish is the extra cost Enchanté, While we didn't have a chance to dine here, the space is certainly impressive. Taking inspiration from the enchanted objects of Beauty and the Beast. Where we did have time for dinner is the similarly inspired Palo Steakhouse on the other side. A richer aesthetic lends itself well to the line's signature Italian restaurant that has an expanded menu to now feature premium cuts of meat as well. Here we enjoy delicious traditional starters. The pizza is just top-notch at Palo. As are pastas. And a black Wagyu tenderloin from the always fantastic Snake River Farms is a real treat. Sides are also masterfully presented and desserts are decadent for sure. Not to worry though, because there's still plenty in the way of included complimentary dining as well. Starting downstairs on deck 11 at Marceline Market. The onboard buffet has been refined on Wish, both aesthetically and practically, as more of an urban food hall with separate stations. And there's an attached coffee bar to make getting a premium pick-me-up easier than before. Particularly impressive is Mickey and Friends Festival of Foods. As a major improvement to the poolside grill, pizza, and ice cream concept, this venue has grown to become a sort of secondary al fresco buffet. With all those things continued, plus lots of impressive barbecue selections, as well as a custom taco and burrito or bowl cantina. Besides complimentary soft serve, Inside Out Joyful Sweets offers premium ice creams as well as other extra cost treats. And boy, are there quite a lot of items to choose from. In addition to cupcakes and cookies, there are many gelatos and many ice creams, all of which can be crowned with a whole variety of tempting toppings to create one just to your liking. Descending back down to Deck 5 is where another adult watering hole is found. Cake and Compass is one of several bars that conveniently dot the ship throughout versus being grouped together but off the beaten path and harder to find. It's nice to see a return to the nautical theming here, which includes carvings of octopuses hilariously holding treats like dull whips. Speaking of venues that more evenly punctuate the ship, there are altogether more intimate nooks, including several bonus cafes, like the Enchanted Sword one, which off the Grand Hall looks a lot like a castle itself, serving coffees as well as tasty coffee-based cocktails. 
Deck 5 is also where the first of three complimentary rotational dining rooms is located. Arendelle, a frozen dining adventure, takes dinner theater to a whole new level. Down this meticulously themed hallway, taking detailed cues from the first animated film, before opening up to the main restaurant floor and center stage. Hosted by the enthusiastically silly Oaken is a celebration of Princess Anna and Kristoff's engagement, including a live musical duo, and most impressively, the first audio animatronic on a Disney cruise to bring Olaf to life on a service cart. The singing and dancing are engaging, but the chance to interact with the character's table side is even cooler. And the food ain't bad either, as they say. The scallop pastry is definitely a winner, as is the tasty carrot soup. Less impressive is the middle-of-the-road pork tenderloin. But a real standout is the super flavorful meatballs and noodles dish. And the apple sweet send-off is great as well. Just below on deck four is Worlds of Marvel, the second rotational dining room, essentially replacing Animator's palette from the previous ships. While it's somewhat sad to see the more creative aspects such as drawing your own character and watching it animated on screen missing this go-around, the venue is certainly very cool and its cinematic nature is ultimately a worthy replacement. References to Adventure Through Inner Space and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids are a lot of fun for the most avid Disney fans, while everyone will enjoy activating their table's quantum core to participate. The cruise-centric comedy touching on towel animals and more is truly entertaining, as is the MCU clip show that plays during the bulk of the meal. The bow buns are a surefire hit to start, and the fried shrimp is yummy as well. But it's the golden mystic angel hair pasta and scallops that most shines with an outstanding flavor profile. The only real miss is the ricotta gnocchi, which was surprisingly lumpy in consistency. But the lovely tart key lime pie made up for it before returning to the action. Again, the crew specific humor is too funny. And Paul Rudd further steals the show until Ultron crashes the party. But that only prompts more characters to join Ant-Man and the Wasp, like the Falcon, turned Captain America, and Ms. Marvel, heroically jumping around the pool deck to save the day. The action is well staged, and the CGI is convincing to make it appear to be really happening on board. Captain Marvel even shows up to see what all the fuss is about, before we're recruited to assist them all for one final blow against Ultron. Then, Ant-Man and the Wasp make an appearance to thank everyone for their great work. Before some final glitches cause oversized Disney desserts to appear. As well as undersized cookies at your own table. Deck 4 also features another Wishing Star Cafe, ensuring there are plenty of places to get a coffee on board. The setting here is themed to Pinocchio, and showcases fantastic mosaics telling the story. Heading down to Deck 3 is where guests will find the third and last included rotational restaurant. 1923 is the most elegant of the trio. Without lavish storytelling or entertainment, but outside displays highlighting the ship's creation, and inside ones celebrating the old Hollywood of Walt and Roy Disney's time in Tinseltown. Since we have Powell's Steakhouse reserved later in the night, we only had time to stop by here to try out the full array of appetizers, and we're very glad we did. Some dishes are similar to previous Disney Cruise Line favorites, while improving on each it would seem. The starters are light and refreshing, or hearty and savory. Off of the Grand Hall, as a central gathering space, is the Bayou. Themed to the Princess and the Frog are inviting seating alcoves that radiate out into a lush landscape for live music. As well as refreshing drinks and house beignets. 
Also to its side is nightingales for even more adult beverages. And live piano music that spills out into the atrium. But perhaps the single most anticipated venue on board is the adjacent Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge, which can only be faulted for being too small for its demand and usually requiring reservations during our sailing. Otherwise, the space is stellar, complete with fascinating fixtures and, of course, its signature view of the galaxy beyond. which is fully animated and transitions by sideways hyperspace. This is the side of the ship, after all. To new scenes every several minutes. As a celebration of Star Wars, the images come from various timelines in the franchise without being locked to any specific one. And the drinks are equally interesting, with lots of foggy ones on the menu, minus Minox, thankfully. One even requires a special blacklight to view its neat printed foam. Be sure to enjoy all the details. Like this cool hologram projecting ships, like star speeders from Star Tours. As well as, of course, the outer vistas, which may even include the Halcyon from Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, and classic X-Wings jumping at a light speed. There's no doubt that entertainment is a hallmark of a Disney cruise. And we got our first taste during the ship's christening ceremony in Port Canaveral, where all Make-A-Wish children, past, present, and future, serve as the ship's godchildren. As showcased portside, fireworks are integral to the Disney Wish repertoire. And the pirate-themed party and pyrotechnics at the main pool deck are once again among the exciting offerings. As we head down to Deck 5, other entertainment venues on board encompass Triton Lounge, a small side cabaret seen here showcasing the colorful puppets and costumes of the ship's Little Mermaid production show. Meanwhile, on 4 and 5, Luna is the now double-decker, multi-purpose venue for other live entertainment and family game shows, as well as nightclub dancing and more. And now there are two dedicated movie theaters on board, to split up the films that can be screened simultaneously, along with those on Funnel Vision. Wonderland Cinema is the first, and while both are smaller than before, the available cinematic variety is applauded. Neverland Cinema is the second, and both are designated by gorgeous signage and themed light fixtures. Like Tinkerbell on her cleverly projected wings, of course, the Walt Disney Theater is still the main show lounge on board. And its enchanted forest and undersea look is perfect for the ship. And its aforementioned, lavish Little Mermaid stage show. Even the Welcome Aboard show is quite fun. As Captain Minnie helps encourage Goofy to take the helm. As always, Disney pulls at the heartstrings. With its beloved cast of characters. As Goofy begins his adventure, so too do we as cruise travelers. And returning once more to the Grand Hall is where even more entertainment is found, with additional character meet and greets and a final farewell from loving Minnie and Mickey, concluding with a magical kiss goodnight, with a final fiber optic splash of pixie dust. And to briefly revisit all the wishes venues, Disney Uncharted Adventure is a way to use digital devices to create your own avatar and join with friends and family, using smartphones as magical spyglasses to play games, and embark on a ship-wide scavenger hunt, solving puzzles, and unlocking special effects throughout the ship. 
it's really a whole lot of fun. Now, as for our Disney Wish pros and cons. What we didn't care for are the otherwise fun, but slightly underwhelming Aqua Mouse attraction, the difficult access Cove Cafe, and the fact that Star Wars Hyperspace Lounge is a bit too small for the demand. But what we loved and can take a bow include the same Star Wars offerings for being super cool nonetheless, the overall improved ship layout with great nooks and crannies, and the continuation of Disney's unmistakable cruise magic. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.